بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم سلام and welcome to another session of spiritual Saturdays inshallah tonight we're going to talk about um, how to prepare for the month of Ramadan inshallah that is approaching very fast the title I had um, in mind for tonight's session was let God be the hero this Ramadan let God be the hero this Ramadan and this is um, something inspired by um, the Abu Hamd al As I said, you know, I've been spending the last maybe five, six months every day with Imam Sajjad and this du'a. And one of the things I realized is that with Imam Sajjad, he, he says that don't try to go on this journey on your own. When you have a God, shouldn't that make a difference? Uh, why are you not relying on God? Why do you want to become a good person yourself? And I realized that that is actually true. That's um, a, a trap we almost all of us fall into. I'm not saying it's a mistake or it's any anyway, with best of intentions, right? Uh, but this is the way we were taught. But with best of intentions, usually we fall into the trap of the month of Ramadan comes. And we're like, okay, this is two things I want to improve myself on, or this is one thing I want to work with. Imam Sajjad says, do it, Begardam. My love, 11 months you had time to work on stuff. This month, let God be the hero. Although later on I would say that he says, let God be the hero throughout the year. But at least in this month, you're going to, as we say, God is the host. Ramadan is a feast hosted by God, and when you want to go to Ramazan, you're not going there to bring something with you. Uh, don't think that this is a month in which you have to uh, achieve yourself. This is a month of receiving more than achieving. So um, if you want, for example, better akhlaq, if you want better connection with God, this is not a month to go and say, what are 200 things I can do to get this done? Be like, what are different ways I can go to God and ask him for this? So in terms of um, the, the things we want to achieve, it may not necessarily change, but the way we want to get it would be different. So I would say, if this Ramazan, you want to make the most out of it and you want to, I don't know, become a better person, have a stronger connection with God, ask God for all of it. Whatever du'a you're doing, whatever uh, beautiful act of worship you're doing, consider it an act of inviting God to your life and allowing him to be the one who comes to your heart and does his magic, the, the magical, the, the divine magic and changes your heart. And uh, well, inshallah, uh, you know, in the month of Ramadan, the first seven nights, I'll be at Stanmore and the lectures will be live, I will open this up. This is a whole new way of uh, spirituality, a whole new way of connecting to God and starting to live as if we have a God. Uh, sometimes you read uh, Abu Hamd al and uh, you feel like, oh my God, <laughs> this was possible? This way of life is possible? I remember my teacher, as he was giving a commentary on the Dua Abu Hamd Thumali, he mentioned the line, he said, most people, even Muslims, go about their journey of spirituality as if they don't have a God. And you're like, what do you mean? And you're like, well, look at all the things we do. Like, I want to achieve this. I want to do that. Then I'm going to get to this level. I so I want to heal this thing about myself. I want to do that. Oh, this is going to be the tough part. And he said, oh, where is God in all of this? Like, if you have a God and God has access to your heart, God has access to your soul. The hadith says um, that the heart of mu'min is in the hands of God, metaphorical hands. Again, God has that much access to us. Or the other phrase, in Allah, hayahulu al mar'a wa qalbah. If God has that much access to your heart and God is so powerful and God is so present, why don't we allow him to be the hero of our story, the hero of our spiritual journey? And by the end of it, we wouldn't feel like, oh, look at me, what kind of Ramazan I had. It would be different. Be like, oh, my God, what a God I have. Look what a Ramazan he created for me. So I thought maybe this would be a point worth sharing for um as we are approaching the holy month of Ramadan. And um, I guess I can end here and 
look if there are any comments questions i would be more than happy to address them otherwise we can wish each other and pray for each other maybe some inshallah nice prayers and du'as and go about our life so uh, does anyone have anything they would like to share or any questions they have I forgot my water bottle. I'm feeling a little bit thirsty as well, but that's okay. We're preparing for the month of Ramadan, so <laughs> better get used to the to the thirst, huh? No? Oh, alhamdulillah. I feel like there are no questions. So maybe I can give you how do we do this practically? It's um the the first step, the most important practical step is that change of attitude in the heart uh, see that the, this is the on a daily basis it gets hard so see on a daily basis even not much changes it's it's the, the attitude you have let me give you a few examples someone may say this month of ramadan i'll try to um, read the quran more for example and through this act of reading the Quran, I will become more spiritual. Now, who is the hero in this story? It's me. Oh, I want to read more and I will become more spiritual. Imam Sajjad would say, why do you want to do so much? Not that don't read the Quran, or don't start attacking me again. <laughs> no. Imam Sajjad would say, don't put so much burden on the act of reading the Quran. Don't say, I want to read the Quran, and as a result of that, I will become very spiritual. I will be, he says, no, I will read the Quran just because I want to spend some time with God. God will make me a better person. God, I don't want to achieve anything. You help me achieve all of these things, right? You be the hero. I'm only reading the Quran to show you I love you. If I pray, I'm not praying so that I achieve this and that. I will pray just to show you I love you. You help me achieve all of those things, right? In other words, God, if this is the month you're hosting me, so I, I'm just here to receive. you the one who are giving me. you be the hero. You make my heart more pure. You make my uh, mind more focused, my heart more focused on you. You help me become nicer to other people. Does that make sense? So it's it, it not much physically may change, but everything is changing. It's just a shift of attitude in which you're making God the hero. We had a comment by I think one of our brothers. Let's see. How do we balance talking to God about everything and having the khushu and reverence for the one we are talking to? Khushu cannot be faked, right? <clears throat> Sometimes khushu is faked. Uh, khushu is that uh, state of feeling our uh, ultimate and complete dependency on God. God is, you know, as God says that, and tumul fuqara Khushu is when we finally realize that everything good we have comes from God and we are in, in utter need of God. But this is not something that can be faked, right? It's not like, because in some families, I remember like back in the days, not in this generation, but maybe a couple of generations ago, the fathers were kind of uh, revered in a way that children were not even uh, sometimes feeling comfortable to talk to the father, right? Like they would call him like Aqa in, in, in some cultures, like, uh, like, you know, like very with respect, with not not respect. It was a more kind of maybe conditioned fear. And if you ask that child why this is, they're like, no, this is they have been told to do this. This is not khushu. This has nothing to do with the khushu we should feel towards God, right? This is a fake. Uh, what do we call it? Version of khushu, which is conditioned through fear, through the result of uh, other people's work. It's external. Khushu is that internal feeling that I have encountered the greatness of God and as a result of that I have so much respect. However, this is something very important to bear in mind. This is one of the gifts of the later prophets. 
see one of the things you have to have in mind is that it's not like insan or from day one knew everything about god Humanity through thousands of years has gone through a journey of slowly, slowly encountering more aspects of the divine and getting to know God more. Maybe some prophets ago, when humanity at first encountered God's greatness, they were really, um, you know, they were like, it was pure respect, pure greatness of God and pure need of, of, of insan that, oh my God, there's a God who does not need me, who has then created me. And this was a simplistic version. Later on, as you come to later prophets, by the time you reach our prophet, this picture is completed. It's so beautiful. By the time you reach our Prophet and you read the Quran, God says, yes, it is true that I am uh, in not in need of you and you're in complete need of me and all of that. But that doesn't mean I don't love you. That doesn't mean I'm a dictator that you should just respect out of fear. That doesn't mean I don't care about you. No, and al Hamid, my relationship with you is in such a way that if you feel me completely, you will naturally be happy about me right you will be um it, it, it like you would yourself be like no this is a good god as imam sajjad in do abu ham this is farabi ahmadu shay'in andi ahmadu same root as god in the quran says hamid in other words it is true that i'm very great and big and all of that and you are this tiny little creation but you with all your tininess and insignificance to me i care about you to me after i created you i said for tabarik allah hassan al khaliqin i congratulated myself so you see khushu in the islamic sense of it and when i say islamic it's not exclusive to islam but we're saying because it's one message Dige, but i'm saying humanity as it grew started realizing that this great allah Akbar, who's greater than everything despite its greatness also carries so much love for its creation and, and this is very important for us to know now why are we talking about that? Because the question was, how can I talk to God about everything and at the same time have khushu? I'm saying these two are not contradictory. This God, we can feel his greatness so much and know that he treats us based on his own generosity, kindness. As Imam Sajjad in Dua Abu Hamd Somali says, even فَإِنْ كُنْتُ غَيْرَ مُسْتَحِلٍ لِرَحْمَتِكَ Even though I am very insignificant and I've done so much bad and I'm not worthy of being treated nicely and kindly and with love by such a great being and تَحْلُنَ أَنْ تَجُودَ عَلَيَّ or something like that. But you are such that your generosity, your kindness and love is so great, you give me anyway. Right? So ultimate khushu is not to respect God in such way that makes you keep distance from him. Ultimate khushu of God is such that you realize he is not just great in his significance, but he's also great in his generosity and mercy and attention and care. And once you see the whole package, then you can have khushu, but that khushu actually takes you towards him, which is what salah actually is. In the Quran we read, that قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ This, the, you know, the, the mu'minun, which later on we hear some of their qualities, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ They've succeeded, they've made it. But what is one of their qualities? فِي سَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ So it's so beautiful. فِي سَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ is, is, oof. It's talking about two things. It says they, they have salat, and they have khushu. Salat is what? Salat is you going to God. Because God says, Aqim is salat al-vikri. Perform salat, perform prayer as a way of coming towards me, meeting me, remembering me, right? And the mu'mineen, which Quran says will nail it, will succeed, are such that they go to salat, they go to God, but they have khushu, which is they have realized God's greatness in such a way that it actually makes them want to go towards God. Do you see how it works? With some people, 
unfortunately the wrong understanding of khushu if you have khushu of i don't know let's say go three three generations back and you have khushu of your grandfather for example the wrong understanding of khushu it's like oh this grandfather is so you know like you have to respect him all, all and all of that it makes you not want to go towards him but with god you like it's different once you realize his greatness in all aspects then it actually makes you makes you want to go towards him more um hassanin john asked the question which inshallah needs another full session we'll, we'll talk about it that's not an easy one to um to discuss that's a very tough one but inshallah inshallah maybe another session we talk about it Thank you so much, dear Hassanin. Hope, let me see if we have any other points. Otherwise, we will call it a day. In one of your videos, you spoke about how we can heal through the dhik, subhanallah, and you explained what it meant. I lost this video. Can you explain it or lead me to the video, please? I think it must have been among the Ramadan series last year. Um, I think it was Ramazan last year with Shabab Septain. I will check that, inshallah. Um, yeah, I think Subhanallah was Ramazan either last year or the year before that. Um, yeah. Um, hope, Alhamdulillah, I think we can call it a night now. Um, if you join us late in the session, I'll inshallah leave it on Instagram. You can watch it later. The topic for today was let god be the hero salat uh, maybe we can try to bring all of the different things we discussed together and the 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 connecting rope would be this that let god be the hero of your story um you don't need to the game was not that uh, become a better person the king was go to god and ask him to make you a better person imagine if you want to go to someone's house and they are hosting you you don't take a plate of biryani with you no if the intention is being fed the host takes care of that what do you take to the host an empty stomach and a great appetite so what can we take with us to the month of ramadan a great appetite for improvement a great desire for becoming connected to god but who does that god does it for us so in whatever action we do we don't say this action is making me a better person or i am trying to improve myself we say no i am just through this action showing god that i am very interested in becoming a better person and becoming connected to god and who does the job the host and on that note, inshallah, have a lovely evening. Someone asked about istighfar. Inshallah, another session we talk about it. Although last week as well, I talked about it. If you want, you can watch that session. And uh, keep us in your du'as, keep us in your prayers. Maybe one second, we can also 30 seconds. Huh? All, I'll go sign that everyone in their heart and mind, they can talk to God, say whatever they want. May God, inshallah, send light, courage, peace to the heart of every soul, any corner of the world who's struggling. And inshallah, I'll see you very soon.